Bitte Nase. EA Sports and the United States Golf Association are proud to present a national championship. Today, it's live third round coverage of the US Open Championship. And hello again and welcome, Rich Lerner, alongside Frank Navalo. We are at Oakmont Country Club in Western Pennsylvania. Frank, the site of so many historic moments. Great players have made their mark here. Sam Snead, Ben Hogan, Jack Nicklaus, Ernie Els, a long and distinguished list. Oakmont, if it's not the most difficult golf course in North America, Rich, it's certainly one of the most difficult golf courses. With its 210 bunkers, um, really personified by the church pews, the hard and slick greens that slope away from the player and the tight fairways, this golf course always requires the utmost precision. What a great shot. I tell you, there's long and long, and, and that, with a little bit of breeze behind, it's long. He rode the wind there to payday. He's going to have a good look coming up. This is going to play a lot shorter. It is a steep hill down to the green. Seems to like it. Headed for the fat part of the green. Really in control of this hole. Birdie yesterday and another opportunity on the way. Trying to make yet another birdie. Continues to putt beautifully. Frank, you well know the U.S. Open is a thinking man's game, and this is a good example here, this short par four second hole. It certainly is, Rich. It's not about length. It's not even about accuracy. It's about trying to pick the right shot, and the right shot is somehow finding that fairway between the left as it creeps in and the six bunkers on the right. He has given this one the full treatment. Perfect release through the ball. And this shot he is on the fairway over 300 yards. Yeah. You can't hide the flag stick from that man. He is just uh, unbelievable, that, that never deviated offline. Frank, this would be a nice way to jumpstart the round. Yeah, his momentum uh, can quickly go in the right direction if he makes this. Right off the edge. Uh, just a fraction softer than it might have, might have just turned in. For par. Frank a par here, that's just fine. Frank, this hole, the third at 428 yards, has been a part of the US Open story for a long time, for obvious reasons. It's just a great par four. It's a typical US Open par four that, that challenges in between the ears as well as the, the swing and the execution itself. Um, the second shot, slightly uphill. You really got to break this green into two sections. That ridge in the middle, anything past that, everything funnels off and towards the back of this green. Anything short of that, well, it actually goes towards the front side. So very difficult from T all the way through to the green. What do you try up next? Pretty good all day from this distance, just trying to take care of business. Put 
putting on a show this tournament moves to 15 under par. Now to the par five fourth, it is 609 yards. Frank, this has been pivotal in past US Opens. Yeah, it certainly has. A good drive here, there's a chance to go for the par five and two. A bad drive here, at finding the church pews or the bunkers on the right. More often than not, you're pitching out sideways. Totally different proposition. I knew it right away, Frank. That's a good one. Solid. Second shot. Good looking shot right here. That one was running so hot. Playing his third here at the par five. Pretty good shot right there. See if he can go one better than yesterday when he made par. It's tough for birdie. Frank, this is the kind of start every player wants. Yeah, swinging it well. Certainly hitting the ball in the right place there. And uh, the other good thing, too, he's actually putting well. Good tee shot right in the short grass. These are always tricky. Severe downhill to that green. Wow, Frank, he is dialed in. Yeah, that was just some shot on that. Easy birdie. Good chance here. Mark that as a birdie on the card. Frank, you played the U.S. Open and nearly won it back in 1994 at Oakmont, so you Remember this par 3-6, the 194 yards, it's changed a bit since then, how? It has, they've actually made the green a little bit bigger and how they managed to do that, they took away a bunker that used to be behind the green a little on the left side. Um, it's not really made the hole any easier, but it still suits a, a, like a little bit of a cut. And there's something that starts on those left bunkers and works its way back towards the middle of the green. The reason why that's a better shot is because the slope of the green goes in the opposite direction. So it's one way to keep the ball straighter. Getting set now over the putt. Yeah. Oh man, you can't miss him from that distance. Just a tap in to finish the hole. Comfortably knocks it in. U.S. Open continuing here at the par four seventh at Oakmont. It's 434 yards. Nice well, this looks good. It certainly is. Frank, when I think about the U.S. Open, I think about Justin Rose at Marion in 2013. He hit a nearly perfect drive right down the middle, right next to that famous Hogan plaque, Hogan winning there in 1950. And then he hits that second shot, the four iron, and it appears to be perfect, but U.S. Opens aren't always fair, are they? And then from that point, he took what appeared to be a bad break and he still went 
forward for the win. I think it's a great example, Rich, uh, that you just brought up. I mean, there's an example of two of the best shots set in the US Open pressure, and yet they're not rewarded with a birdie putt. And I think that's what defines the, the, the toughest championship that there is in golf. US Open's Frank, as you well know, you've played in so many of them, are supposed to be demanding and tough. This is what a US Open's all about. Par three and nearly 300 yards. That's the eighth at Oakmont. It's not just the length too, but this is a, a typical Oakmont green, which means it's not easy. There is an option though, if you can't reach this green or at least fly it on, you might get a lucky bounce to kick forward. Um, you'll see a lot of people chipping from around the front edge of this green and there's no shame in that. Frank had hit the green, but just didn't have enough backspin. It, uh, you wonder what he's thinking on that. You like this one, Frank? Oh, it's a good one. Safely on. And it's a long way to the hole from here. Never easy. That was a good run right there. Almost went in. Uh, at least he's seen the line as it went past the hole. So just replicate that on the way back. That's a bogey, but still in the lead. We start to see shots in hand, really valuable. And now to the ninth, and in case a player has forgotten somehow that he's at a US Open, the ninth will remind him very quickly that uh, this is the national championship. This is demanding. Long and straight. About 320 yards and in the fairway. Stumbled out of the gates, but now on solid footing, getting ready for this approach shot. Good swing, good shot yet again. Frank, you're in the business of analyzing golf shots. I don't want to see that one again. Just an amazing display. The records continue to fall. Picking him up live now at the 10th. Frank, as we come up on the middle portion of this third round, it's been a good performance so far. It has, taking uh, all the opportunities uh, that have been presented. And there's plenty of them out on this golf course too. Once again, pick away the easy holes. That's the key to this round of golf. The par fives, the reachable ones, the short par fours where you get wedges in your hand. That's the key. Try to bury every putt 10 feet in. You've really got to focus on the small things. Good spot right there. Center cut. This has really been impressive. Started off slowly, just didn't have a whole lot, but kind of hung in there, fought when it wasn't going their way, and now here they are with a few birdies, really playing well at the closing stretch. Frank, really good chance from this position to make a birdie. Yeah, really the only thing he's looking at right now is the flag. Uh, this is a green light special. Early part of this second nine, a good approach shot. Now, pretty good chance for birdie. Trying to make yet another birdie. I thought that was in. Yeah, it looked good. I mean, line, pace, it's hard to be critical of that. Standing over this putt. Concentrating on the read. The 
Good work right there. They'll settle for par. Par 4 11th is 379 yards as we continue. The backside here at the U.S. Open at Oakmont. Frank, what's the strategy off the tee here? You're hitting something that goes about 240, 250 yards maximum, um, hopefully keeping it out of that right rough. And the reason why that right rough is certainly to be avoided is that big gaping bunker at the front of the screen. Green's perched up a little bit, so this is another one where if you can hit an iron or a utility club off the tee, you must find the fairway. This one looks like it's headed right for the middle of the dance floor, Frank. Rather nice shot, I would say. Oh, can't hide the flag stick from that man. Just a couple of feet. Simple, solid, and he'll take it. But one that you need to make. Well, Frank, the par 5 12th here at Oakmont, it's a lot of golf hole at 667 yards. It's the hardest par 5 I've ever seen or played that doesn't have water. Uh, it starts with that tee shot. The whole fairway slopes left to right. Just to get the ball on the fairway, uh, you've got to draw the ball against the slope. The same problem exists with the second and the third shot. Couldn't ask for too much better here. And from the fairway for his second shot here. Frank, that ball's sitting up like it's on plush carpeting. Rich, if you and I had lies like that every time, we'd still be playing this game for a living. Frank, this is a position where a player is absolutely licking his chops here. Good chance to make a birdie. Yeah, this is when this game just looks like fun. Bunkers don't seem to be in play. The only thing you're really looking at right now is just the flag. And they're close, about eight feet from the cup. It's a tricky one, but it's in. All right, Frank, at the par 3 13th at 183 yards, what do you see here? Well, there's a lot of things to, to consider, but the general slope of this green really makes you either hit to a specific section on the green or just try and keep the ball below the hole. It's always easy to putt uphill on fast greens. I mean, that's how the game is played, right there. Uh, he's just making it look so easy. That birdie coming up, formality. So, we'll tap in. Continues to amaze yet another birdie, and what a day it's been. Well, the reason Oakmont has hosted so many U.S. Opens, Frank, as you well know, is it has a really good blend of holes. And now we come to a, a short par for it, 358 yards, the 14th. You can see uh, the predicament in front of you, bunkers left and right. But uh, really the bonus here is if you can get the ball on the fairway with just uh, something like a long on off the tee, this is one of your best scoring opportunities at Oakmont. Well, errant tee shot here, Rich, but going to have to muscle this one out of the rough. Ball sitting down here in the rough. He's digging in. Frank, not close, but from that line, not bad. Oh, that's excellent. Seriously, given the conditions, Rich. Birdie try again here today. Had a nice birdie on this hole yesterday. Yeah. 
so close. And yet it still counts for another shot. Been pretty good all day from this distance, just trying to take care of business. Those keep the round going, those par putts. Well, this is a good U.S. Open par for it, 499 yards. The 15th is one of the better holes in the course, Frank. It is. The, the shape of the tee shot you think would suit a cut, but because the fairway slopes uh, quite severely to the right, really it needs a draw just to work its way against that slope and somehow keep it on the straight and narrow. Well, that's got to be 300 yards, isn't it? It's a big shot right here, second to the 15th hole. Seems to like it. Looks like it's headed for the green. Good, clean contact, and a nice result, and a chance for birdie coming up. Really? This is an awkward length. Well, that would have been a bonus had it gone in, but still, reasonable chance for par here. Yeah, there's no damage. You're not going to birdie every hole. Well read. Yet another demanding hole here at Oakmont. A par 3 16th, 231-yard par 3. Frank calls for a well-struck long iron. It, it certainly does. It's going to favor something that's hit a little higher and a little softer. If you could just mentally cut this green in half and just sort of look at the left half of this green, that's really the best way to play this hole. And the reason why is the general contours all move to the right. That ball can still funnel down to the right side of the ground. Made a par in his previous round. This time, it's for birdie. He got robbed, Frank. No, oh, it's like kissing your mother-in-law. And he's putting for par now. No, really, Rich, right now it's just a case of running out of holes. Pars are fine. Now on to the 17th hole, and Frank, in so many ways, this determined the outcome of the 2007 U.S. Open. Jim Furyk had his issues here. It's just 313 yards, but it can really play with a player's mind. It's such an unusual par four for a US Open, plus also where it comes in the round, because the options, and there's only really two, is like a four or five iron, sneak it up the right side, or you take a driver directly at the green. Um, it, you would think there's something in between, but really there isn't, and that's why, to your point, it, uh, it stopped Jim Furyk, it stopped Tiger Woods, it allowed Cabrera to win. It also helped Ernie Els, who went with the driver option there back in 1994. So 17, it's short, it's tempting, it is at a US Open, but it is still demanding. Well, we've seen this before today, in the bunker, looking to splash this softly onto the green. This is turning into a nightmare here. Yeah, bunker shot after bunker shot. All right, so greenside bunker. What's he looking to do with this shot, Frank? Well, really, you have to look at the amount of green you got to play with. You don't have to try and fly the ball right by the flag. Allow it to run. Plus, if you can get it to run like a putt, you never know. It might just go in. Well, just a little too much, Rich. I don't know if it was wind at his back. He didn't calculate it, but he's going to be left with a difficult chip shot here. Well, that's a, that's a little absurd, that Rich. That shot wasn't that hard, but it's come up uh, well short. Didn't appear committed through impact. Time to just pick up and move on to the next hole.
Frank, you know this as well as anyone, having competed in and contended in U.S. Open championships. An 18th hole at a U.S. Open is supposed to be tough. A par is supposed to be hard won. This has all the elements of a great finishing hole, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't know if you could use the word fair, but you would say it's a just finishing hole. It's right, because it extracts the best you'd ever want to see out of a champion. Someone that can basically stand on that tee, gather their thoughts together, thump something down the fairway, then come up with a second shot that's nearly as challenging as the, as the tee shot, and then somehow two-putt. You do all that with the lead, you deserve to pick up the US Open trophy. Settles in over the putt. That's good work right there. Just a tap in. Not a gimme, but well within his range. Just an amazing display. The records continue to fall. Frank, that front page of the leaderboard has been looking good all week. You're exactly right, Rich. Uh, I think our winner is certainly going to come from that list right now. I'm excited for tomorrow's final round. Nine, sir. Over and out.